over the last 18 months or so, you have heard Jonathan and I warn about the pain coming to the commercial investing landscape, specifically new syndications, bridge debt, all of that stuff. If you want to see those videos, go back in Jonathan's awesome playlist. What we want to talk about today is the pain over. The Fed pivot is here. The Fed is calling for three rate cuts. We've seen the 10-year note crash to below 4%. So I'm guessing, Jonathan, it's Nirvana, unicorns, rainbows. Everybody's saved. No more pain. We just go on like, uh, you know, go to the moon, as the kids say. What do you think? Yeah, I think we should just shut the recording off now. <laughs> it's all done. It's all done. The it's Fed saved done. us. Powell saved us. Yeah. Well, listen, I mean... Uh, so let's talk first about the interest rates and then talk about what an effect this will have and sort of what else yep. there is uh, going on in the market. But um, so obviously, look, everybody is, loves a lower interest rate, right? It'll at the margins, it's going to help some people, um, especially those people who need to refinance, refinance their debt or need to buy rate caps. Uh, you know, I was talking with a syndicator friend of mine the other day and they are looking at refinancing a rate cap and it literally since the since they started the conversation about refinancing the rate cap the rate cap is the price of the rate cap has dropped by two hundred thousand dollars and that was before the fed's action yesterday right so i suspect that the price of that rate cap has dropped even more we may be getting to the point where some syndicators are going to say hey look we're just going to pull the trigger and buy our rate cap now buy it early um and uh, because we want to lock in this rate because we don't know where things are, are headed from here. Now, some people will kind of hold out and, and hope for more cuts. But so here's the thing. I mean, you and I have talked about this a lot. Everybody has, when they, I mean, look, the the Fed indicating three rate cuts next year. I mean, that's not what Powell said. He didn't say we're cutting rates next year, right? I mean, it's just some of the Fed governors are kind of plotting that as what they think this is going to go. And I don't, I, I think let's, let's wait and see. I think the markets are getting ahead of themselves in saying that rates are going to drop mostly because of sort of wishful thinking about rates dropping, right? The rates are not high by historical standards at the moment. And, sure. you know, and there's a lot of good to be had at rates that are higher like this. It's painful for, you know, the real estate industry for sure, but eventually that will work itself out. But I'm just I, I think it's a little bit of like too much celebration too soon because we just because I, I, I just don't I mean, you know, t tell me if you think differently, but I don't really see rate cuts coming yet necessarily. I think the Fed is going to hold out to make sure that they've really whipped inflation. They don't want to be the guy before Paul Volcker who. Yeah. Who took Arthur the, Burns. Arthur, yeah, Burns. Arthur Burns, who took, you know, took his foot off the brakes too soon mm -hmm. and caused an even worse problem. I've seen some of the saner heads out there saying they don't really anticipate a rate cut till this time next year, right? So basically the fourth quarter of 2024, yeah. they think yeah. that rates are going to get cut. Um, so yeah, I, I I would just say like, we're still in a wait and see about this. And I think the market really may be kind of jumping the gun. on, yeah. on the, but let's, let's talk about the rates for a minute. I mean, your take on that, but then I'll talk about the yeah. impact. On the family. It's, it's interesting. Um, I think there's a couple of things that happened yesterday. I think Powell was as clear as he can be giving himself enough outs that rate hikes are over. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So terminal rate achieved. That that does mean logically speaking, the next move is down. Okay. I can I can handle that logic so far. Uh again, the dot plot, the Fed presidents, the average was three rate cuts next year. It ranged, I think, from one to six. Hmm. Again, these are the 19 folks that get to vote, um, which are interesting. I I believe um, my gut says the summer will be the first rate cut. I think the market is way ahead of themselves. I think they're pricing in a 57% chance in March and due to a 9% chance in January. Like mm. January is like 12 days away. I yeah. mean, it's yeah. wild. Um, but I do think the next move is down. I do think there will be multiple. And, and the reason I think that is actually something I teased together today. So if you look back at CPI, CPI headline, owner's equivalent rent was reported at six and a half percent because of the bad calculation, the lagging calculation, the stuff we've talked about ad nauseum. 
Redfin, Daryl Fairweather, chief economist at Redfin, reported that national median rent is down 2%. So if you simply replace six and a half with negative two, and oh, by the way, shelter's 30%, you know what, Jonathan? Big, we already big, have inflation yeah. sub 2%. It's already yeah. there. It's done. And if that happens, you can see rates come down, not because of a recession. You can see rates come down because they want to maintain their restrictive nature and not get more restrictive. So right. I do think we're getting, you know, three, maybe four rate cuts next year without a recession. I want to be clear. If we get a recession, it'll be more than four. We could get four without a recession, which is wild to think about. That's, I mean, that's interesting because that is that is like the opposite of what I've been saying. Now you're more of a Fed Fed watcher than I am, um, so I'll probably defer to you on this. But I mean, my view has always been that the Fed has been trying to get rates normalized, right? Yes, and that inflation gave them a great you know opportunity and cover politically to do it because it mm -hmm. was certainly unpopular, yep. and that once having achieved that, they weren't just going to go and undo all their work by cutting rates a lot. So that yeah. if there was a recession, they might give some lip service and do a little rate cut. But fundamentally, they want to be more restrictive than mm -hmm. they have been. Because, and frankly, where they are right now is not particularly restrictive. It's pretty, it's pretty much kind of in the middle. It's not sort of too accommodative. It's not too restrictive. You know the the biggest no. news from yesterday <laughs> that no one is talking about is I believe in the dot plot. The Fed told us what the what the uh, minimum rate they will go to in the future. They're not going to zero. So how did I get there? If you look at the dot plot over the next three years, they are, they, the 19 people are forecasting three cuts in 24, four cuts in 25, three cuts in 26, bringing us to about two to two and a quarter percent. I think that is meaningful. We're not going back to zero, but what they're telling us is they're comfortable getting us to about two. And that's without a recession. So now if we believe that's the floor, the only argument, Jonathan, is how fast we get there. That's the argument. They're telling us it's going to take 36 months. I don't think it takes us 36 months because, again, they don't see inflation getting down to 2% till 2026. I'm like, you're going to be there by the summer, yeah. right? Maybe by September. So it's going to be wild, I think. I think next year is going to surprise people. I think inflation... Uh, you know, heaven forbid we don't have a, you know, OPEC or, you know, something drastic like the 70s. Um, I think inflation is going to shock people at how fast it falls. I think next CPI is the last CPI with a three on it. Every CPI after that's under 3%. It has a two on it. So, I mean, well, you know, that <clears throat> this is getting a little bit off topic, but it's okay. It it's our raise, show. It does raise the question. I mean, because it's still stuff I want to get to and I want to forget what I want to say, but it it does raise. Do you remember? So you know, a couple of years ago, when inflation really started raising its ugly head, mm -hmm. and the Fed was saying this is transitory, and then there were all these people screaming and yelling, "This isn't transitory," you know, blah 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 blah. And then, well, now within two years, the Fed has brought this under control. So it kind of raises the question again. Well, maybe it was transitory. I mean, well, how much was this related to just the boatload of supply money chain and that, yeah, yeah, like yeah. I dumped on people plus the supply chain and all that yep. stuff has basically worked itself out now with a little help from the Fed tightening. Sure. Um, but, you know, stuff like even, you know, if you look at apartment rents, <clears throat> you know, 2021 and 2022, apartment rents went up, you know, 20%, right? Or mm -hmm. more in certain markets. Yep. And now we're seeing declines. Like, it just wasn't sustainable. Like you, of course, it, it wasn't sustainable. Yeah, right. So, and there had to be reversion to the mean on that, right? Of because, course. Yeah. So that really has nothing to do with the Fed or with anybody else, uh, or you know, it just yeah. Had to do you know, I think it's the speed. I think you can give credit to this to Fed for accelerating that process. Mm -hmm. I think reversion to the mean happens regardless. I think you can give the Fed a little credit for making it happen sooner. I think I think that might be fair. Yeah, perhaps. I mean. I'm, yeah. I'm not. I mean, I'm not a Fed hater, so I'm not. I'm not like yeah. trying to take credit oh. away from them. I'm just posing the question. I mean, sure. It just or or saying you know in in a in a more roundabout way, maybe they were right when they first. Maybe when they said, just a longer time frame. Yeah, yeah. this is transitory. Uh, yeah. You know, they got all this pushback, but maybe they were right because maybe you know, and yeah. they it was transitory for two years, and they they 
got it under yeah. control by tightening. So, yeah. um, all right. So let's just kind of go back to the topic about how. Yeah, this is- the topic is multifamily commercial real estate is saved. Rates are falling. Uh, the world is okay. Back to the moon. That's 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 this video. Yeah. So I mean, okay. Well, let's take it. This is a multi-part sort of question, right? So for, let's try to take it in order. Um, as far as what's happening right now, as I mentioned before, I mean, this will definitely help people in terms of their uh, their rate caps. You know, maybe you'll see some owners starting to think about listing their properties again uh, mm-hmm. because they're it, maybe it's good, they're going to get a, a better pricing than they would have now with rates being lower. Mm-hmm. Right. I, I mean, I've seen the counter argument too that this is going to maybe incur the stop plot is going to encourage owners to just hold on to their properties until yeah hold on one more year right yeah exactly just to try to get the full benefit of these rate cuts if they can yeah. hang on. Yeah. Um, but well, let, let's know. actually talk about the pain because i want to go there first and i actually want to go back to transactions because at the end i think that might be a fun conversation yeah. but when we talk about the pain i think last week we did a video talking about the real deal right the real deal has been on top of all the syndicator pain they're creating cartoons of all these gps that are blowing up uh, we're seeing more and more foreclosures in Texas of all places. I, I read about more yesterday. Does that stop? And in my opinion, if your debt service is already below one uh, DTR, right? Uh, you, yes, this yeah. doesn't save you. If you're already yeah, in trouble, it doesn't this, save you. This this will save people who are close to the line, right? Yes, but not but, over. But not, not people who are well under the line, right? So Correct. And the thing is, so think about it this way. I mean, we, when people were buying, uh, you know, buying properties at, at three caps because they were getting debt in the threes, right? right. Their, their debt had a three in front of it. Absolutely. Yeah. And now their debt, now the debt has, you know, even if, even if the fed, the funds rate is <laughs> at, at four, when you put in the spread for the more, and spreads are very yeah. high right now. This is another thing yeah, they are. I'm not focused on, right? So typical spread is about 200 basis points, give or take. It sort of fluctuates between about 150 and 200. Sure. Right now it's at 285. And, yep. the, and so what that says, this is something I think a lot, lot, not a lot of people are really focusing on. Everyone's going, well, look, the Fed, the Fed rate is dropping. We're going to have these mm-hmm. rate cuts, like woohoo, right? But mm-hmm. the banks are looking at that and they're saying, we're not so sure. Right. So we're going to put this big, this big ass spread in here mm-hmm. because we don't think that the rates are going to drop that fast, right? Yeah. So we want to make sure that we're protected in case they. Yeah, you know, I, I've talked about this a lot on my channel because again, in the residential space, the spread was over three hundred basis points yeah. for almost a year, and the average is one hundred and eighty. The reason that's important is there was over a point drop just in margin. And what I've been saying for quite a while is the banks have to believe the Fed is done. Yeah. I think yesterday was a watershed moment. I think Powell said as clear as he can, the rate hikes are over. The dot plot shows rate hikes are over. And just yesterday, um, we saw a huge drop in the 30-year mortgage rate. It went from like 7.08 to 6.82. And the margin fell to 282 basis points. So we might be on the cusp of margin compression. And then if you get the follow through with rate cuts, dude, Jonathan, we could be sub six by the summer. This is wild. So, I mean, listen, so I guess the thing is in the spread and the spread is the thing to watch and we should watch yes. it from, from here on in. I think the spread is telling us what the banks think is going to happen. And mm-hmm. they, so you may wind up, the spread may still be high because the markets may be more aggressive about where they think the Fed is going than the banks are. Yeah. Right. So the yep. spread is in, in, in commercial, right? Maybe mm-hmm. maybe residential. It's a, it's obviously it's a different it's a different market and different spread. But sure. the spreads remain high. So the point I wanted to make is that you're still looking at 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 mortgage rates over six mm-hmm. and close to seven even. And um yeah. if you're if you're if your existing debt has got a three on it and the refin- refinance debt has got a six yeah. on it. You still have yeah. a big problem. Yeah. You, and, yeah. You don't have to break the cash in refi is not 50 million. It's 38 million. Yeah. It's still the, a problem. Yeah. And the, and the, the cap rate still has to reflect the cost of capital. Correct. So your the cap rate is also working against you. So, yeah. this, so the, the point is here. So just on the interest rate piece of this, the point is, well, yeah, lower interest rates, they help a lot of people, but mm-hmm. do they help enough? Probably not. They probably are only helping some people who are really on the margin. They're on the bubble, but yeah. the the people who bought at the top of the market are still 
not out of the woods by any stretch. No. Mm -hmm. And and the 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 thing too, and I was commenting about this on LinkedIn in a couple of places when people were talking about interest rate cuts. You know, I said, look, this is only, and as I've mentioned on this channel many times before, this is only one of several headwinds that are facing multifamily right now. Correct. And any one of these headwinds would have really caused pain. And we've got mm -hmm. all of them at the same time. So the, the the rate hikes are just one piece of it. The other pieces are in certain markets, you've got really large oversupply. And that is Correct. not going to- And getting it. worse. And getting worse. I mean, Dallas, 10% vacancy. Yeah. Market wide. 10% I mean, vacancy in Dallas and getting worse. Yes. Yeah. So, so listen, just to get, put some context to that, if you're looking to get agency debt, you have to show 90% occupancy for, I forget at this point, but six months or a year or whatever for that, for, for the federal agencies to consider the property stabilized. Right. Okay. So, and you can't, otherwise you're looking at bridge debt or CMBS debt or something else or that's just not as good as agency debt. Right. So unless the agencies change that, you're, it's going to be hard to get agency debt in a market like Dallas, where your occupancy may be below 10% now, right? Now, obviously it's gonna be affected, you know, that's affecting more like class A properties that are in lease mm -hmm. up, what have you. Nevertheless, 10% vacancy is going to cause a lot of people to, to pause um, yep. buying stuff in that market. And you've got that across a lot of, a lot of markets throughout the Sunbelt right now have got very high vacancies. That's one major headwind. Another major headwind is uh, expense growth. Yep. Right, you've had you've had in taxes, insurance, in, crazy. Particularly in places like some of the hottest markets, like Texas and Florida, insurance rates have gone through the roof. Uh, taxes have gone <laughs> through the roof. The way that they, you know, it's funny. I have a, I have a, I have a good friend, very very conservative guy, right? Mm -hmm. Only invests in states that have an income tax. Why oh, is okay. that? Because states that have an income tax don't whack you as hard with property taxes. Yeah. And as, yeah, an out of state, as an out-of-state owner, he yep. doesn't care about, he's not paying income taxes. He's only yep. paying property taxes, right? Correct. But if you're looking at states that have no income tax, well, where do they get the money? They get the money by, property. You know, yep. by whacking property, right? So places like Texas and Florida, um, yeah. hammered. they're getting hammered, right? And and then insurance are getting hammered and labor costs are getting hammered, mm -hmm. right? So yeah. all, it's all bad. Yeah. The NOI and this we've talked about this so many times, like the other component, you know, the two components of your DSCR are your debt service and your NOI, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, yep. What we've had now is debt service going up and NOI going down, which is like <laughs> the worst of all worlds. Now, maybe there's a little relief on the debt service piece, yeah. but the NOI is still there, right? And yeah, it's going to take, good. and you can't grow your rents now, right? Because you've got too much occupancy, you've got too much vacancy, you've got, you know, yep. uh, you can't raise rents in a lot of markets, right? You've got yeah. outright rent declines, as you were just mentioning about the for the CPI. Yeah. You've got outright yeah. rent declines in, in a lot of markets, particularly the Sun Belt. So the 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 pain is not over. And and the way that these No, pain the pain is not over. I, I I tried to open this with just a crazy saying. It it is not over. Uh I don't even think it's less worse. I think there's a couple of people at the margins that might be saved, but it's it's it is such a small increment. There's still plenty of pain coming, lots of sins to be paid for. Also, Michael, you know the way that this works too, because you you've been around, right? The, yeah. the the when you when you look at like the Great Recession, right? The pain lasted for years, right? It years. Yes. Well, it, a lot of it doesn't even hit till after the quote unquote recovery has started. Correct. Right? So yes. the economy may be doing better, but the pain is still catching up. Yeah. Um with with all these owners mm -hmm. so i yeah. i don't even with even even if let's just say rates go back to zero right sure okay you're st there's still gonna be a lot of pain there's still gonna be people oh. getting close on there's still gonna oh, yeah. because of all these other issues that mm -hmm. are that, that the industry is still faced with yeah. uh and so and we're not clearly going to zero Right. So no, you know, clearly not going to zero. Yeah. So again, I think there's plenty of pain. I want to go back to an idea that you brought up earlier that I hadn't thought about what this, what it might mean for sellers. Because again, I think in residential and commercial transactions have been few and far between, at least in residential, we set a cycle low at 3.79 million for existing sales. We were at 6.2 million. 
to give you a scale. Commercial, same thing. I'm talking to commercial brokers. There's nothing to do, right? I'm getting phone calls almost every day for my commercial buildings. And it's interesting to think about the sellers. Let's think about sellers who bought in 2010, 11, 12, like I have. We've owned our assets for a decade. Uh, we have plenty of, of, of margin. You know, um, might this might this bring new inv not troubled inventory, not not distressed inventory. Just hey, I'm an owner. I'm getting up in age. I'm thinking about selling. I think that's an interesting riddle. When do you think they come back? Yeah, I mean, well, given the fact that a lot of them are there already, I mean, like the hotel stuff I'm looking at is is that demographic. It's the people who are okay. just like I'm done now. I'm done. Doesn't matter. I'm done. Doesn't matter. Yeah. I, you know, and I've got look. In the grand scheme of things, if I if my profit on this property is one point two is only one point two million, and I had been expecting one point four million, yeah, and, right, you know, and, but I'm ready to retire. I just want out. Like yeah. they're not okay. They're not holding on for two more years of yeah. Like, that last, not, they're not holding on for the last hundred grand. Yeah, yeah, because they've made the decision already that they that yep. they want. They're they're, they're uh, mentally there. Okay. And so, so those people are already out there. Now, the people who are kind of like thinking about this, who are like, hey, I want to retire, you know, in a few years, some of them might be starting to think, okay, well, look, the environment's getting a little better. But I still think there's a there's a wait and see with those folks too. Yeah, I think you it's, know? yeah, I think you're right. I think there's another year. I think, I think a lot of the, because I, you know, when you get into a market for this long, you talk to lots of other owners and, and uh, most of them are actually older than I am. A lot of them, I think, are what you're just saying. They're like, you know, I, I've had three or four phone calls in the last 48 hours and they're like, you know what, you know, I thought I might have to hold it for another five years, but you know what, maybe, you know, maybe, maybe I'll check in the summer. That's actually what one guy said is I'll see where rates are in the summer. I'm like, that makes sense to me. Yeah. I think people will want to see like, okay, people, you know, they're forecasting a red, a, a rate cut in March. Is it going to happen? Right. And yeah. if it doesn't happen, then I think you'll then see what? a lot of people, yeah. you know, like still holding on. Right. If, Maybe if a, if a real if a rate cut does happen, then who know, I'm not going to say the floodgates are going to open, but I think you might start to see like some some cracks, you know, yeah, yeah. stuff starts to, to. I think to, at the end of the day, you're absolutely right. The pain that's been building is real; it's not stopped. Uh, this is just one factor out of many that's really going against, frankly, overpaid and bad debt structures. There are people that paid too much and they had bad debt structures. What happened yesterday and has happened the last two weeks is not going to save them. This will save people at the margin that are operators that are buying rate caps that are doing this and this, but it's not going to stop the yeah. pain. The pain that started is going to continue. I think you're right. I think the property that's going to start coming to the market when things do loosen up is going to be the 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 long term held property with low basis yeah. by people who were just ready to move on and they're deciding, okay, you know, things are a little better. I'm gonna it's I'm gonna look at selling now but the yep. folks that, and this is this happens in every cycle like the people who the last in right the people who buy at the yeah. top there's yeah. no saving them, right i mean no, you're done you're usually, not safe yeah usually, usually what they did in order to buy at the top is to do something funky with with debt right because it's the yep. only way that they could get there and so yep. those people there's it's just too bad you know yeah Agreed. Like, they they got to learn the lesson, pay the price, and move on. Yeah. Yeah. Unless you unless you are a really good operator, or um, you know, you're you're like, independently wealthy and you could you could write a check for forty million to save your building. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, and there are people out there doing yeah. that. Yeah. Right? Sure. Oh funding, yeah. Funding these properties themselves. Yeah. Um, you know, but there are there are definitely um, the people who. Did the worst structures and bought at the worst time are are, are going to be the worst. This doesn't save them. Jonathan, where can people find you? So uh, if you would like to get on my investor list, please Google Two Bridges Asset Management LLC and fill out the investor form there. And uh, we, we can jump on the phone if you like. Um, or you can come to Apartment Investors Club on Facebook and uh, join my group there. And there's other ways too, but I'll just leave it with that. Thank you, buddy. I appreciate you. Thank you.